Hey everyone, it's uh, Brett Hornby here and welcome back to my YouTube channel and this video uh, I'll kind of break it up in two parts that uh, I'm still wearing my Calgary Stampeders gear because I got some more Calgary Stampeders and CFL news I'll touch upon. In this video, the first part, I'll talk about the Global Draft and recap the four players that the Calgary Stampeders selected as there was a Global Draft that happened recently. These are players that uh, were traced back to roots outside of Canada and the U.S. That's separate from the Canadian College Draft, which I'll recap that next month when that usually happens. But this is the Global Draft as the CFL is trying to uh, attract more talent overseas. And there's definitely some interesting names. And I think, yeah, this is the first year that they've actually had a Global Draft where you have players that have gone overseas. And then we'll talk about what we're speculating that I'm hearing in the second part on what's going to happen in the 2021 season. Because it, it's starting to sound like the starting on time thing is not going to happen. So let's just first talk about the global draft and uh, look at the four players that the Calgary Stampeders have selected. But uh, we'll first talk about the Global Draft, well, I think they figured out the order. I'm not really sure how they figured out the order, if it was based on uh, how the season went in 2019, because uh, there was no season last year in 2020, but it actually was the BC Lions that got the first overall pick in the Global Draft, and they actually selected Jake Ford, a punter, and he is from Australia. So that was the first overall pick in the Global Draft, so this will be known as the Jake Ford Draft, if anything big comes out of it from the Global Draft. But uh, each team got to pick four players. I know that the Canadian College Draft that happens in May, or that's where all the Canadian talent come from, since they couldn't figure out the order for a season that didn't happen, there was a draft lottery, and as I believe, yeah, the Hamilton Tiger Cats won the first overall pick for the 2021 draft so yeah I think I'm not quite I say because uh, the order went BC Lions and then the Edmonton just call yourselves the Elk football team and then there was the Toronto Argonauts got third overall the Winnipeg Blue Bombers got fourth overall Sketch and Rough Riders got fifth overall the Montreal Whites got sixth overall the Calgary Stampeders got seventh overall Hamilton Sidercats got eighth overall and then the Ottawa Red Blacks got ninth overall so that's how they I think it was a I think it was a lottery that figured out the Global Draft, don't quote me on it, I don't remember, but uh, that's the Global Draft. So that was who was picked first overall. So now when it comes to who the Calgary Stampeders selected, I'll put the links in the description below, the tracker and uh, the Calgary Stampeders story. But with the first round pick that the Calgary Stampeders picked, 7th overall, they also picked a punter in Cody Grace. And he went to school at Arkansas State. He's a... Uh, Six foot two, 220 pounder, and he is from Perth, Australian. So we have an Australian punter here as he played in Arkansas State from 2017 2019 in 37 games for the Red Wolves. He punted 178 times for an average of 42.1 yards. So uh, I know that uh, Rob Maver recently retired, and then we signed Ronnie Pfeiffer in Free Agent Frenzy. And I made that video a couple months ago on what the Calgary Stampeders did at Free Agent Frenzy. But as mentioned that uh, he had the longest putt for 50, 75 yards. He had 42 punts, at least 50 yards, and 75 punts within the opponent's 20-yard line. So could he be a successor to Rob Maver, a new coffin corner master? Who knows? And then in 2017, he became the first Arkansas State University player to be a semifinalist with the Ray Guy Award, Ray Guy Award, I'd call it, as the nation's top putter. And he was the first team all-star at the Sun Belt Conference in 2019. He grew up playing Australian rules football at Warwick Senior High School and graduated from Arkansas State with a degree in exercise science. So that's the profile on Cody Grace, the first player that the Calgary Stampeders drafted in the uh, global draft for representing Australians. So good day, mate, for those Australians. So the second player that the Calgary Stampeders got in the second overall, or the second round, I should say, and uh, I'm going to say it, this was definitely uh, 
Yeah, it was a random order because, uh, oh yeah, it's a, oh yeah, snake, snake draft, snake draft, that's, because I remember I made a video, it's a snake draft, so yeah, because Calvary drafted 7th overall, this next, the next person that they picked was 12th, so yeah, snake draft, and there will be a snake draft for the, uh, Penny College draft, so I'll get that out of the way. So the second person player that the Calgary Stampeders drafted, I'll try to say his last name. It's Franklin Abagasimir. He's a defensive lineman. He went to school at Missouri. He's a 6'2", 245 pounder, June 30th, 1995, and he actually is from Lagos, Nigeria. So this time we go to Nigeria for the second player that we picked in the uh, global draft. As I mentioned, the Nigerian board as Agabasimir played four seasons from 2016 to 2019 at Missouri, where he played 26 games for the Tigers. He had 10 tackles along with three sacks for a loss, or three tackles for a loss, one sack. Agabasimir also received a scholarship offer from New Mexico State. He also sat some time on special teams. Agabasimir began playing football in high school at Monteverde Academy in Florida, where he completed and tr competed in track and field. So, uh, must be a fast person as well. Three-time star college recruit, majored in economics at Missouri. His first exposure to football came in 2011 when he saw former Baltimore Ravens Ray Lewis on an ESPN commercial. So, the Dirty Bird. So maybe we have our own Dirty Bird from Nigeria. So that's the second player that the Calgary Stampeders drafted. So the third player is third round in 21st overall. And actually, I'll explain that there was a trade that the Calgary Stampeders made. If you go back to my Free Agent Frenzy video with the Toronto Argonauts, we traded away the rights of Eric Rogers, Cordero Law, and Roberson Daniel. And there was picks involved in this draft that got swapped. So I'll touch upon that. But the next person that we drafted was Aaron Dunker, third round, 21st overall defensive lineman. He went to school in Arkansas State. He's 6'2", 240 pounder, March 21st, 1995 born. I'm etching Germany. Das is good. I couldn't think of anything what I can put for Nigeria, but uh, so we went to Germany for this person. His Dunker played the 2019 season at Arkansas State via the NFL International Player Pathway Program after transferring for New Mexico Military Institute in six games at Arkansas State. He tallied 25 tackles, including one and a half tackles for a loss. He was named the All American at New Mexico Military Institute where he made 27 tackles and 11 half sacks over just four games in 2018. Oh, aye. Right. Prior to arriving at the United States, he played for Dusseldorf Panther in the German Football League. Prior to football, he played professional basketball back home in Germany. So that is the third player that we drafted in Dern Dunker from Germany. So the last person that we drafted, yeah, because we traded away a third, we got a third round pick or, and a fourth round pick we traded away in that trade ahead of free agent frenzy with the Toronto Argonauts because the third player, the fourth player that we picked was also in the third round, 25th overall in Isaac Halakron, if I said it right. Offensive lineman, he went to the previous team. He was at the Monterey Institute of Technology, ITM, if they call it. 6'6", six 320 six, pounder, July 27, 1998. When they say Monterey, he is from Monterey, Mexico, so I caramba. Alcaron played left and right tackle at the Monterey Institute of Technology, where he helped his team win the Mexican College Football Championship in 2019. He was also named the league all-star that year. He joined the NFL's Dallas Cowboys on April 27, 2020, as part of the NFL International Player Pathway Program. I know that's the other thing that the NFL has done as well. It tells you that the gridiron football is starting to expand overseas, and that CFL's trying to capitalize on that. He was a, he was waived by the Dallas Cowboys September 5, 2020, and then assigned to the team's practice squad. So he has at least some exposure with the uh, NFL, not playing in action by some of it. Alacron was the member of the Mexican national team, which won the bronze medal at the U19 International Association American Football World Championship. And then this is that trade I'll talk about. The Calgary previously made a trade with the Toronto Argonauts in part that included the exchange of Toronto's third round pick, 21st overall, and the Stamps, their fourth round pick, and 30th overall in this draft. In 2018, the Canadian Football League, League, League Liga de Football Americano, Mexico draft was held, followed by a CFL European draft. So 
there's definitely a lot more international flavor when it comes to the Canadian, the as I meant to say, the Canadian Football League and American football or Greater Football in general. So the other thing I'd like to touch upon is the trades that were in play that we used that Aaron Donker for linebacker that we acquired from the Toronto Argonauts in that uh, trade just before for Age of Frenzy was basically to recoup some assets that we were likely going to lose in Free Age of Frenzy. The pick that the Toronto Argonauts used, that uh, the third of the overall pick, was used for punter Mike Duffy, who is from Australia. So I guess, like I say, I look how the all the players that were drafted. Well, Aussies have a lot of punters, a lot of Australian punters. So uh, definitely some interesting uh, countries that I represent. They don't associate football with, and I know there briefly was an NFL Europe. I'm just trying to think there was a lot of Aussies. There's Germany, there's a couple of Nordic countries, there's players representing Finland, Sweden, France. Let's see, there you also got a player from the Bahamas, Great Britain. There's a Japanese player, South African, Belgium, or I mentioned Japan, well, New Zealand, I guess the Aussie rules football. And then Nigeria for uh, the Kikaru Stampier player. There's someone from the Netherlands. So, uh, and then you got, you know, Australia was the country that was represented the most, the most as I meant to say, and actually even Denmark. So those are all the countries that got represented in the uh, global draft. So I think it just tells you that uh, Great Iron football is more just exclusive with uh, North America, with the you know the United States and Canada. And, you know, first heard about this uh, Mexican foot football league or that the CFL partnered with, and I know the CFL was looking over in Germany and briefly with the NFL Europe data was around in you know, the mid-2000s, so whatever you want to call that decade. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these players fit out in the Calgary Stampiers and all the players that were drafted in the global draft and see how they fit in, you know, climatizing to the Canadian game in North America. It's always kind of that same intrigue when it comes to hockey. You know, with hockey players you get from Europe, you know, because of the international ice size versus the NHL size in North America. So that's the first part of the video. Now the second part of the video, there's still a lot more uncertainty when it comes to uh, the 2021 CFL record season. I have not heard anything in terms of progressing, but there, apparently there's word, if you look on 3 Down Nation and basically if you read any insiders on TSN, that apparently there's a Board of Governors meeting here later in the week. Here we are in the third week of April. And keep in mind that Actually, as a Calgary Stampeder fan, the first scheduled game, which would be preseason, would be on Sunday, May the 23rd, which is the Sunday before the Victoria Day, or, yeah, before Victoria Day. That was scheduled to be the first CFL game for preseason that the Calgary Stampeders would host the BC Lions. But uh, considering I have not heard anything, I haven't got any, you know, any updates on season tickets, payments, or that, it sounds like that the word on the street is that the season is going to be delayed yet again. I mean, obviously, it got delayed last year, but the thing is, the pandemic happened suddenly with COVID-19, where suddenly, you know, things were out of whack and paused and shut down, and eventually the season got canceled, and it just still seems pretty bad that, uh, I mean, it's dire, and the CFL definitely relies on a lot more on fan attendance and fans being at the game and I mean this is an opportunity to look at uh, changing their business model and there's always been the word the last few months about the XFL and the CFL discussing partnership but uh, it sounds like that this season will not be starting on time because I'm definitely not optimistic about uh, me being at McMahon Stadium next month for the first preseason game and once again I guess I'm looking forward to my birthday for nothing in terms of uh, last season in 2020 the Stampier's own Walter would have been on my birthday on a Friday night, and that did not happen. Well, was, when then when the schedule came out, I was thinking in November, I was thinking, hey, I might have a second chance at it. I don't think that's going to happen as uh, the home opener for the Gallery Stampeders. I mean, you know, the numbers are still going in the wrong direction. I mean, yeah, there's apparently trying to get more vaccines, but it's we're losing to the battle, especially the variant virus, and uh, this, uh, you know, whole thing has also been playing kick the can down the road but it's not you're not just a kid kicking a can down the road but uh 
it sounds like uh, the season's going to get delayed, and it seems like the consensus is that there, if at best we could have a you know abbreviate season starting on Labor Day, but I mean it's there's still too much uncertainty, not knowing you know vaccines or how we get this under control. I know that there's still uncertainty about what the Calgary Stampede, the greatest outdoor show on earth, will look this season or this year, I should say, in July. I know apparently there's some already summer events that have been canceled, and there's also maybe there's a word that Dina Inshaw, our health, you know, our health director, health minister, is meant to say. Apparently, there's maybe some hope that maybe by the end of July, that there could be, you know clearances to have like summer outdoor festivals i mean i still think the cfl i mean other than bc and even then you can have a, the roof open especially during the summer being outside i mean it'd be a lot easier to be socially distant i mean the cfl had a year to look at what the nfl has done and there's been some markets that had fans in attendance when it came to the you know nfl last season and as the season one there were more fans in attendance i mean it's still a lot more strict in Canada. I mean, NHL games, although it's all indoors, there's been no fans in attendance. And I'm probably going to give some NHL updates in a separate video, but it sounds like that uh, the Canadian teams that made the playoffs will be playing in the bubble in the U.S. But uh, it's, I still think they're, they have to have a season if the CFL wants to continue existing. And they're still having businesses like Draft, Free Agent Frenzy, this global draft. I mean, you're giving, you know, players hope for playing football, but we don't know if there's going to be a football season. But I'm doubting that uh, either they're going to be a compressed season or it's going to be an abbreviated season, maybe just playing divisional only and then compress it and then still have a Grey Cup in late November as scheduled. But uh, that seems to be the word on the street. I'm, I know just as much as you if you're watching this as if you were watching this right after I've uploaded it, that's, it sounds like the start of the season's going to be delayed, and, I mean, you just keep kicking the can down the road, I mean, we still got the border restrictions, so it's going to be much more time that it's going to require for players to get into Canada and then have to quarantine, I mean, maybe they'll make, make, make an exception for CFL players to cut it from 14 to 7 days, but uh, it, it, that's what I'm hearing right now for the second part of this video that uh, the season is still going to be delayed. But I always keep hearing all the insiders say there's going to be football this year. Well, I hope so. I mean, not only just for my mental health and well-being, but just for the state of the CFL and the Calgary Stampeders. I don't want to suddenly have to make another episode of my Remember the Calgary series talking about the Calgary Stampeders football team. But, uh, I mean, that's another shameless plug for another video series that I've done. But, uh... I mean, what do you think, both the global draft, but also touch it upon that, are we going to have football in 2021 in the CFL? What's the season going to look like? Is it going to be 18 games, or is it going to be only 10 games starting on Labor Day? Will fans be allowed in attendance? How would they do the social distancing? Or, uh, or maybe the fact that maybe more fans will take time to get back into the game, that would make it easier. I'm just saying with it being outside, I mean, every city has a CFL stadium that's outside except BC Place, but even then you can open up the roof if that makes any difference. But, uh, you know, it's going to still take time. But I still think there's going to be a season, but it's not going to be as scheduled on paper. And, uh, I mean, business is still going. So, I mean, you have to think there's some plan somewhere. I just haven't heard anything. But uh, these are tough times. I mean, you also got to wonder about, you know, the government. I mean... Last year, the CFL, all they asked was $30 million. And, I mean, that's a lot of money to you and me, but uh, that's another thing when it comes to the government. But then the government, you know, spends billions on other things. And I know that the airline industry has recently got some package, repayable package for billions as that industry has been hit hard. But uh, there's a report that these governments said they're not going to pitch any money for the CFL yet again this year. But... Uh, I don't know. That's just enough of me rambling on about the second part of this video. So anyways, I want to say, if you want to follow along this Calgary Sports fan's journey, on the Flames, Hip, and Rough next to Stan Peters, I mostly do talk Calgary Sports on my YouTube channel. You know, I'll just recap the Global Draft, and next month, I guess we'll take a look at the King College Draft. I hope we draft players that are associated with Canada, but I also do a variety of non-sports content, like personal blogs, 
Tech to Comedy and also do share my experience today on the road or a sport event. So if that all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch, to follow along this Calgary Sports Fans journey, you know what you do, just uh, make sure you like, subscribe. I also have my other social media links down in the description below. So I was going to say, go Stamps Go, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And hopefully we'll have football to actually talk about games to actually recap. Players, let's say, we recently drafted to actually play in games this year in 2021. So thank you.